Watch Dogs is a fantastic series of games. They may not always live up to the hype, but you can't deny that they bring something new and different to the open world genre. The first game had a very rough launch that left many fans feeling disappointed and almost lied to in some ways as a lot of features that we had seen in the trailers and such leading up to the release, as well as how it looked graphically, didn't translate into the actual game and a lot of things were cut and many things were just straight up left in the game but just not used and instead hidden away within the files. Legion was okay, the combat and hacking mechanics were great but I felt like they were lacking compared to the first and second games but it did have phenomenal graphics and at least in my opinion it was a great game story wise with its only let down being the way we got to experience it as the player. Don't get me wrong, I loved the fact that we had the ability to pretty much hire anybody off of the street to join DeadSec but that of course led to some odd dialogue choices with our characters responding to other characters in ways that not only didn't suit the character who had the voice but didn't really fit the tone or the situation. This is where Watch Dogs 2 comes in. For me this game is absolutely perfect. I genuinely couldn't tell you a way that I think you could improve on this game. It has everything from fantastic graphics, a fun and engaging combat hacking and stealth system that at least for me doesn't really get boring considering you spend 95% of the game using these things. Not once did I ever get bored of it. It had an absolutely well crafted representation of San Francisco that felt like a real living thriving city and to top it off it had a story and characters that I genuinely cared about and that is why today many many years after the game's original launch and seen as I have already completed it on Xbox I have finally returned to it on my PS5 to get its platinum trophy. Now just before we get into the video I am going into this with three trophies already unlocked from a few years ago, two of them being story related which you unlock pretty much right at the start of the game during and just after the tutorial, as well as a miscellaneous trophy for performing three jumps in a row with a vehicle. Just thought I'd let you know so you understand why I'm starting this video with three trophies already under my belt. But anyway, with all of that out of the way, this is the story of Watch Dogs 2 and how I got the platinum trophy for it. Enjoy. We begin the game as Marcus Holloway, better known in the hacking community of Watch Dogs as Retro, and we are currently tasked with breaking into a CTOS data center and deleting our profile as part of our initiation into the hacker group known as DeadSec. Now, for any of you who don't know what CTOS is, it's basically a massive citywide operating system that essentially everything is connected to, from toasters to your car, everything goes through CTOS. Now as something that we pretty much always come to expect from games, this acts as the tutorial level where we get introduced to many of the game's mechanics, things like the parkour system, stealth, hacking and combat, which I will say, this game does absolutely phenomenally well in all of. I actually can't think of a time that I didn't enjoy any kind of anything that I was doing. I enjoyed every part of this game. We eventually gain access to the center's server tower and its database system where it's revealed to us that our boy Marcus isn't your typical hacker. He's got a very high level of skill and in fact he has already gotten further than anyone else as no one has ever made it this far. After gaining access to the control room we enter the system and find our profile. During this we discover that CTOS has been able to track everything we do and depending on what it is is, even adds it onto our criminal record, increasing our threat level. We of course proceed to wipe all of that data and essentially turn ourselves into a ghost before making our escape. We are then captured by and shortly formally introduced to the San Francisco outfit of the group known as DeadSec. Turns out they were impressed and we was now part of the group. Welcome to DeadSec. Speaking of which, we have Satara, Josh aka Hot Sauce, Wrench, and Horatio. What's up, brother? What's up, man? It's the crew, huh? While celebrating our success, we decide that we need to expose Bloom, CTOS, and anyone else for that matter, showing the public that their personal data and everything they do is being used to rob them of their freedoms, made much easier due to the fact that while hacking into the data center, we installed a back door, meaning easy re-entry. A few drinks in and we find Marcus breaking the seal and pissing over his shoes when a jogger comes by and asks for a quick word. We drop our phone and he picks it up for us but not before having a quick little fiddle around with it himself. Though drunk, Marcus still knew what this guy was up to. Hey, 
Have a good party. Fucking king this motherfucker. Fuck you, Bloom. I'm gonna go have a goddamn good time. The next morning, we wake up with a brand new phone and a call from Satara telling us to make our way over to the group's hackerspace and to set up our phone and download the apps that we would need off of the App Store. We buy and download all of the apps and it's here that we unlock our first trophy back on the game, Appin' Around. We head to the nearest shop, put on some clothes and then make our way to the hackerspace. Once there, we discuss how we are going to go about exposing Bloom and the other corporations, but before we can make any significant steps in that direction, we needed followers. Every follower we have gives us more processing power and botnets, which we need. I'm not going to pretend to understand why, just know that we do. Before getting down to business though, we talk to all of the members of the group and get kitted up before heading out. Thanks to the DLC that I own, I was able to use the 3D printer to print a two-handed weapon, which then unlocks us the Menace Trophy. At this point, our next few operations consist of doing various publicity stunts and social media videos in order to gain followers. We begin by stealing a prototype AI smart car from the upcoming Jimmy Siska movie, Cyber Driver, and after repurposing it for our own means, we then use it to race around the city and put on a spectacular show, which in the end does result in more followers and another trophy. We then discover that the same actor Jimmy Siska is in trouble with the New Dawn Church and that they were planning on auditing him, not just to take all of his money, but also for more sinister purposes. We take the auditor's place and interview Jimmy Siska where he reveals to us that he has heard about people who have disobeyed the church being taken to some kind of red room. We investigate this matter further and end up saving Jimmy himself from this red room. This then leads us to infiltrating the church itself and during the process we discover that the Sumerian tablets which the church have convinced people are ancient artifacts and are pretty much what their church is built on, are actually fake. With the help of Jimmy Siska coming forward to the police with his claims, as well as the evidence of the faked Sumerian tablets, we expose New Dawn Church to the public and its followers, showing everyone that they were a massive scam, stealing people's money, as well as brainwashing and kidnapping people, with some never to be seen again, leading to a full police investigation, permanently staining the church's reputation, and unlocking us another trophy. And finally, we stole a robot, hacked into and exposed the Bloom home operating system known as Home to show people that their every move is being watched and controlled, and of course, earn another trophy for completing the operation. During this op, we also earned the miscellaneous trophy, Roboteer, for hacking a robot. At this point, things were looking very good for DedSec. We had already managed to expose a number of different corporations for their actions, and our follower numbers were growing rapidly. Perhaps a bit too rapidly, though, as this leads Josh to run a check on the numbers, and while going through the data, he discovers an irregularity. We investigate this further and find out that someone from within Invite Social Media Company is altering and boosting our numbers, and this leads us to breaking into the CEO of Invite's office when we run into the same man from the beach. This time he reveals himself to be Dusan Nemec, the founder and CEO of Bloom. He reveals to us that he was behind the boosted numbers and that he was actually using our rise to fame as a way to sell CTOS to people by convincing them that it's the only thing that can prevent them from being hacked by groups like DedSec. He also tells us that he has placed a warrant out for our arrest consisting of various different crimes that we have committed. This of course now makes Marcus a fugitive and seeing as everyone was now in danger, we had to leave the city for a while, leaving many members of the group in doubt as to whether to carry on our pursuit. While out of town, we decide to attend a hacking festival in the desert and take part in the event's hackathon. We manage to succeed in hacking the target and we are introduced to its creator, Ray, who takes the time to celebrate with us. You kids want to feed your heads? 
everyone takes one too many mushrooms than they should have and starts tripping balls so they decide to go for a walk. Meanwhile Marcus takes the time to stay and speak with Ray who he knows is actually the legendary hacker Raymond Kenny, better known as T-Bone. We discuss with him what's been going on and what we have discovered before continuing to enjoy the rest of the night. We are woken by Ray the next morning, turns out some absolutely crazy stuff had gone down last night and we needed to make a quick exit and decided to head back to the hackerspace where Ray tells us that he will help us with our calls and begins by offering to scrub us from the Bloom system. We meet back up with the crew and at first they weren't fans of the idea that we took it upon ourselves to bring him into the crew without discussing it but eventually they warm up to it. Uh, yeah, I would love a beer or two. Oh, thank you. Now at this point, the public wasn't particularly fond of DeadSec due to how Dushan and Bloom has managed to portray us, so we begin getting back in the public's good graces by going back to exposing the big companies. To do this, we start by meeting up with Horatio and with his help manage to infiltrate his place of work, Noodle, posed as an employee and hack our way into their servers, obtaining a massive amount of data and at the same time manage to save Horatio's job. We then use that data to follow more leads that will eventually allow us to expose the major corporations. Completing the mission, of course, unlocks us another trophy. While going through the data, Dushan Nemec meets with Lenny, leader of the hacker group Prime 8, and makes a deal asking them to tell him everything they know about DeadSec and to counter-hack any of our hacking attempts, and she begins by locking access to our own servers. We then meet up with Lenny herself, who agrees to give us access back to our servers, but only if we make a video publicly denouncing ourselves and our efforts. We, of course, aren't going to do that and manage to track down the location of Prime 8's main hideout. Lenny was expecting this though and had rigged the place to blow. We then quickly disarm all of the explosives before stealing the encryption key, allowing us to re-access our servers. And upon completing the op, again, unlock another story-related trophy. Later, after realising that someone was stalking members of the group, we track the spy back to a surveillance van where we end up learning that Deshaun had not only hired Prime 8 to try and stop us, but had also hired the FBI to watch and track our every move, and while retrieving this data, managed to unlock the Knock You Out trophy for stealth takedown in a total of 30 enemies. Knowing that the FBI are now hot on our trail, we decide to hit back by infiltrating the FBI headquarters and hacking into their servers in order to gain evidence of the Bureau's corruption. During this, however, the FBI managed to capture Wrench and begin to interrogate him. We managed to track down and hack into their hideout to see how it plays out. It wasn't long though before, you guessed it, Deshaun makes an appearance and begins to conduct his own interrogation. He tells Wrench that he will agree to take DedSec off of the FBI's radar on the condition that they come and speak to him directly. He then proceeds to let Wrench free, but doesn't allow him to take his signature mask. We, of course, aren't going to take this standing down, and we make our way over to the FBI's field base to download some more of their surveillance data, as well as retrieve Wrench's mask. After retrieving the data and the mask, we decide to expose the FBI's illegal activities to the public, causing an uproar amongst the people, and unlocking us another trophy. A little while later, it was brought to our attention that Horatio has gone dark and no one has been able to get in contact with him and so we begin tracking down his phone's last location. We find his phone and use the nearby CCTV to play back its recording to find out what happened. It turns out the Tesca's gang were for some reason after Horatio as we can see him get kidnapped by a group of them. Using facial recognition software, we are able to locate and find one of the members by the name of Louis Trevino to a nearby house and upon breaking inside, find Horatio in a very bad way, bleeding out on the floor. We try to get him to hold on until help arrives, but unfortunately, Horatio doesn't make it. He's dead, guys. Satara Josh, he's fucking dead. Oh my god, Marcus, get out of there now! Fuck! Fuck. 
Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're smart, right? Yeah, I'm smart. Not so smart, he didn't get caught. All that shit you seem to know, you're gonna feed to us. I'm not telling you shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, fuck me, boy. No, 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 cuidado, cuidado. No, 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 pinche fuck. Get out of there, Marcus. You, you've got to get out. Not yet. This then leads to one big revenge mission as Marcus and the group track down the leaders and eliminate them, as well as any of their gang members who get in the way. Although Horatio was dead, his memory will forever live on in this game and in the trophy that completing this operation gave us. A little while after Horatio's death, we decide we need to get back to work and Ray comes up with the idea of installing our own software and backdoor onto one of the Galilei rockets carrying Bloom satellites into space, in turn giving us access to Bloom data centers not just in San Francisco, but all over the world. These data centers serve as the center for many major governments, corporations and individuals to funnel their data through. However, this also means that Bloom has complete access to it. The mission of course is successful and once the satellite reached orbit we hacked into it and discovered just how big the CTOS network really is and proceed to download data from various centers around the world. And of course, upon completing the op, unlock another trophy. Using the data we had recovered from the satellites, Josh discovers that Bloom has been monitoring a network hack from the Chinese and that they are using a pattern recognition software known as Bellwether and use the data they are stealing to make a fortune on the stock market. We also find out that the Chinese have hacked the local docks to pre-authorize clearance for their cargo ship to dock at San Francisco and drop off their shipping containers. We of course investigate this further and end up finding one of their shipping containers at the docks. Inside, a Chinese man that has been trafficked over to the US to analyze the hacked market data for insider trading purposes. Using our newly acquired satellite, we hack into the Chinese ship and spoof its fuel gauges, causing them to make an emergency stop back in San Francisco to refuel. Once close enough, we then take the opportunity to board the ship and locate and extract its server that was only made possible thanks to Josh's engineering skills in creating basically a prototype cargo drone that you may have seen from Watch Dogs Legion. Hey, yo, Josh, man. How many times have you flown this thing? From the server, we discovered that the reason Bloom never intervened was because they gave the Chinese access to the Bellwether hack, allowing them to test it and then at the same time, allow Bloom to blame DedSec for it. Regardless, we put a stop to the Chinese hacks and threw another spanner in the works of Dushan's plans. We finish the operation and unlock another trophy. We then discover that Deshaun is using his relationship with Invite to rig the local election. We investigate this further and discover that Congressman Mark Thrust, as well as a handful of others, are in the pockets of Deshaun thanks to a large amount of blackmail that he has on them. This allows Deshaun to rig the election in Thrust's favor in exchange for basically having control, or at least a major say, of what goes on in the city. We then break into Mark Thrust's penthouse and steal the evidence needed to prove the blackmail and rigged election before making our escape. After escaping the penthouse, we manage to locate and destroy the rigged voting machines before revealing what we have learned as well as the evidence to the public. We finish the operation and unlock another trophy. Soon after, we find ourselves infiltrating another major corporation, this time manufacturer of security machines known as Tidus. During our infiltration, we manage to download all of their project data as well as find prototypes that reveals Tidus's plans to release and sell machines to governments and authorities for civil suppression purposes, some of these even being potentially armed. Of course, again, this is something that we see in Watch Dogs Legion. We then find and use their giant spider tank to destroy Tidus' servers and power supply, shutting down their operation and exposing their plans to the public. Once again, the operation ends and we unlock another trophy. 
With everything we have exposed, this now leaves Deshaun in a state of panic as he knows that he was gradually losing control. This leads him to make it our man Marcus number one on the criminal database, making us a massive target. Unfortunately, this means Marcus has to stay back and provide support from the hacker space, while the rest of the group gets to work on disrupting Bloom's servers and the CTOS system. Now, this is actually a really cool part of the game, as this, I believe, is the only time that you get to play as any other character other than Marcus. And not only that, but this time, we get to play as two extra characters. We first got to take control of Satara, which has us running across the rooftops to an access point that would allow us to hack into Deshaun's assistant's apartment and download the Bloom campus code. Next up, we were playing as Wrench, and with our trusty grenade launcher, proceed to obliterate everyone and everything nearby, making our way down through this facility and destroying Bloom's data backup servers and generators. This then allows Josh to spoof the CTOS system into thinking everyone walking around is a Marcus Holloway, causing it to malfunction. This then means we are back playing as Marcus and this allows us to reach Bloom's headquarters and once inside gain access to the air gap computer. Upon hacking the computer we are able to fully access Bloom's system, allowing us to download numerous amounts of incriminating data, including Deshaun's involvement in various criminal activities. We then meet back up with Ray in order to make our escape and celebrate our victory, and where we also unlock our final story-related trophy. Now, we still had one more stop to make. We head over to Deshaun's apartment where we find him there and proceed to rub our victory in his face. We have successfully exposed many of the corrupt organizations in San Francisco with our final one being Bloom and its CEO. The public as well as the authorities have seen all of the crimes that Deshaun has either been involved in or has outright committed, leaving his reputation tarnished and with a fresh criminal record. We make our exit and leave the police to deal with him. Marcus and Ray then head back to the hacker space to celebrate with the other DedSec members over our victory, and this brings us to the end of the story. And with that, one last social media message where we promise to continue our fight against Bloom and any other corrupt organization we may find. This then leads to two unknown voices discussing the various number of DedSec outfits that have started popping up around the world to continue the fight in their countries thanks to our efforts. One of these being London, which of course sets up the setting for Watch Dogs Legion, a game that we have also platinumed on this channel and if you'd like to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. With the main story out of the way, I can now focus my time into completing the side operations that I'd picked up throughout my time playing. We didn't need to complete all of them, just the three that gave us trophies. Well, technically there's four, but I consider the go-kart upgrade operation to be more of an activity rather than an actual mission, so that's something that I'll do in cleanup. The first side op consisted of us investigating a corrupt group of Oakland police officers with its leader being the captain. We investigate further in and are able to expose the fact that they are using gangs to run illegal smuggling rings for the Oakland police's benefit, while at the same time being able to hide it from CTOS. And when we complete the operation, we unlock the 100% legit trophy, which is also what I like to consider myself. The next operation was really short and I kind of wished it was longer because it was actually a really fun little op. All we had to do was head to Ubisoft San Francisco headquarters, hack into their servers and leak the trailer for an upcoming real game. Yeah, these guys teased a real game and released its trailer in their own game. The trailer shown for any of you who don't know is for an upcoming Ubisoft game codenamed Pioneer. To this day, I still never heard of this game releasing and a quick Google search basically told me that development was not going very well and had pretty much come to a halt. Some say the game has been cancelled, some say it's been rebooted. At this point, I think it's probably safe to say it's not going to be coming around anytime soon, if at all, but I think it is still so damn cool that they used a completely optional side mission in order to tease an upcoming real game. And of course, upon completing the operation, unlock the UB Stolen Trophy.
For our final side mission, we end up investigating the illegal goings on between the Aunty Shoe Boys and the Bratva. We discover that they are not just trafficking drugs, but they are also trafficking people. Continuing the investigation, we discover that hacker Aiden Pierce, yes, the same guy from Watch Dogs 1, was also after them. We get wind of a plan to trap Aiden inside of a bunker, and upon getting there, we do in fact find our man Aiden in a cell. We are, of course, the hero of this game, so we will be doing the same this time. We distract the guard, giving Aiden enough enough time to grab his phone before proceeding to shut down the entire facility. We make our escape, brag to the rest of the group that we just saved the fox, and funnily enough, we unlock the fox trophy. Next up, I decided that seeing as online and events and activities has been constantly popping up throughout the game, I took the opportunity to get the multiplayer related trophies out of the way while I knew it was still popping off. There are a total of five different multiplayer trophies to obtain, which is what you're seeing pop in the background here. Most of the time it was working against other players rather than with, however, there is one trophy that requires us to complete an online co-op operation. This was all extremely easy and I will add fun. A lot of the time when platinum trophy hunting, the multiplayer trophies feel more like a chore rather than something you really enjoy. But I will say, I really did enjoy this, and I actually played a little bit more of this after even Platinum in the game. I still have the game installed. While going for these trophies, I also managed to unlock the Smooth Felon Miscellaneous Trophy for escaping a level 5 felony. Going to check south of our position. Dispatch the squad. With the multiplayer trophies out of the way, now it was time for the cleanup stage. If you can really even call it that, for this we needed to collect a whopping total of 24 key data hidden around San Francisco which we can use to upgrade ourselves. This is made 10 times easier by the game practically giving you their locations and of course upon collecting all of them, we unlock the researcher trophy. <sighs> While driving around picking up the key data, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to knock another miscellaneous trophy out of the way, seeing as we were going to be doing a lot of travelling. I went to a local car dealership and purchased the Meringue, a really, really small car. All we had to do was drive 4km in this bad boy for another trophy, which I actually unlocked before even picking up my first key data during the cleanup. And finally, we took the time to do a little bit of sightseeing and visit some of the popular tourist attractions around San Francisco. With Alcatraz, I've got to say, it, it has to be my favourite. Come on, it's Alcatraz, man. How can this not be your favourite? After visiting and taking a picture of 25 of these, we unlock the Got the Shutterbug trophy. Next up, I focused towards getting some of the vehicle related trophies out of the way. The first trophy we got was something to ride trophy for hijacking a bus. I then jumped on top of that bus and hacked it to move 200 meters which unlocked the let me ride trophy. Next up, we took a trip down to the docks, stole a boat and drove it out to sea. Soon my victim was in view and we hijacked his boat like a Somalian pirate and unlocked the Bad Boys Trophy. I then had a quick Google online for a good looking unique vehicle as I hadn't found one of these yet. Turns out you can get one at these docks and it's hidden in a container stacked on top of some others. Luckily, we're a hacker and managed to get the car down to us. I jump inside it to add it to my collection and unlock the A Ride to Remember trophy. The next trophy I went for was to perform a 140 metre long jump while in a vehicle. This was insanely hard, so the idea is you get the fastest bike in the game, get enough speed and hit the ramp at the end of the road. Now, at first I wasn't using the nitrous, so that's completely my bad, but even when I did use nitrous for the whole thing, it still didn't get me far enough. I went through a hell of a lot of bikes and it sucks because I believe this is the only location you can use to get this trophy. Eventually, after changing absolutely nothing about what I was doing, I eventually hit the ramp at light speed, sending me 140 meters through the air, unlocking the jump around trophy. After that last trophy, I was a little bit annoyed it took me so long, so I decided to treat myself by going shopping. I first went to a clothing shop and bought one of the ugliest pair of shoes I've ever seen in my life, which just so happened to unlock the In Style trophy. By the way, it's definitely not in style. We then went over to the Noodle headquarters and bought a shirt to go with my shoes, unlocking the Only God Can Judge Me trophy. Damn. For real? No. 
and next up we took care of the three different types of races we needed to take part in, all three unlocking us a trophy. One bike, one drone and one sailboat race. Not much to say about these so here's the trophies. For the next trophy it was something really simple and easy and honestly I was shocked I hadn't done this at least once throughout my time playing and that was to ride a cable car. Now something that I love about Watch Dogs 2 is that its world, the city of San Francisco, genuinely feels alive. It feels like a living, breathing world and we are just some weirdo stepping in and messing everything up. Apart from the us part, this is by far the best example of what a true living, breathing world should be like and look like in a game. It's honestly crazy how far they went to make this world feel lived in, from people having conversations that actually make sense, to stopping in the middle of the street to tie their shoes. It doesn't just stop there, you'll come across random crimes happening and civilians will actually call the police and the police will actually show up to do their job. Uh, yeah, I think we'll go with this guy. Oh, okay. He, he just got shot down and they're driving off. And they got, and the police are on the way. Damn. They just pulled right up and shot this guy. Okay. Edwin. Sorry, Edwin. Well, we'll take your botnets because you're not going to need them, buddy. Sorry about that. You'll find guys smashing up cars. I've had enough of you. Fucking dumbass like you. It's a wonder you've mastered the art of... Wait! Get out of here before I take matters into my own hands. You'll see people getting pulled over, you'll see shootouts between rival gangs, you can even find people farting. Ah, so what's happened over here? Passed out? Mate, I don't think clapping's gonna work. Oh. You're okay. I'm a professional. Okay, apparently it does. Consider yourself jump, cured you or say and he disappears. Okay. Nice. Mate, I don't know how to tell you this, but you, you've just been saved by God. But he can't save you from this, have some of that. You can find people training their dogs, and you can even find dogs doing doggy. I mean, this is peak attention to detail right here. Never have I ever seen this in another game, and I don't know why, but I oddly appreciate it. Now of course with there being all of these different things there are of course going to be some trophies linked to these. The first of these trophies I unlocked was the Doggy Land trophy for petting a total of 10 dogs. Okay, so it's all gone to The second took me like an hour to find but we eventually came across someone vomiting and took a picture of them for the Hold My Hair trophy. And finally, we headed to the beach with the hopes of getting photobombed while taking a selfie. This was one that again took me a while and even though we get the trophy, I don't think it was quite worth it. How are we not better with Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Not cool. Now after doing all of the main missions, some side ops as well as everything else up until now, it's safe to say we had quite a little bit of spengy, and within 5 minutes I had managed to have used all of that in order to purchase 25 cars from car dealerships. Again, even though we get the trophy, it wasn't worth it because now we were broke as fuck. I was so broke I even tried to disguise myself as a police officer just to hopefully get some free donuts from the local donut shop. Didn't work out too well and they said no so in retaliation I hacked the donut guy's bank account, took his measly $69 and then called my cop buddies on him unlocking us the feed in frenzy trophy. All units 1029. Which now brings us on to the final trophy of the game and it was really simple. All we needed to do was help our man Taylor and his team in the e-cart championship. We were immediately thrown into a race and even though we come first, this little beast definitely needed to be a bit beastier so we let Taylor know of potential ways to upgrade the ride. He and his team agree it's a good idea to get the upgrades and we then search for both a new battery for the e-cart as well as a new velocity microchip. And as soon as we pick up the second part, we unlock our final trophy of the game, Pimp My E-Cart, and of course, the Graduation Day Platinum Trophy. Yeah! 
And with that being the Platinum Trophy, this of course brings us to the end of the video. Now I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed my time playing through this game. It was honestly such a pleasure to jump back into the Watch Dogs universe, and it was made better by the fact it was the best game out of all three. The developers really knew what they were doing with this one. I loved the story and how it was told. The meaning behind it, the motors of everyone, it was all there, nothing felt like it was missing. I also loved the fact that in reality, a lot of this is actually going on with the government and big corporations in real life, so it's something that feels somewhat relatable. The world they have created in the game, as I've said before, is absolutely phenomenal, from the city itself all the way down to its people and their everyday lives. Everything had a place within this world and the attention to detail is astonishing. Gameplay mechanics wise, things like the parkour, the stealth, the hacking and just general combat all felt good and was fun to use. I don't actually think there was a mission in this game where I didn't need to use all of these in at least one way or another. And everything else that's in this game that I haven't mentioned is just extra gravy on top of quite frankly an already pretty banging roast dinner. So to anyone who may be asking the question of should you platinum this game, the answer is yes 100% yes you should and with that this brings us to the end of the video please let me know your thoughts on Watch Dogs 2 down below in the comments I'd love to see if many of you feel like I do about this game now like I mentioned earlier in the video I have also platinumed Watch Dogs Legion and I have made a video on that so if you guys would like to go and check that out I will leave a link down in the description below now if you'd like to show your support you can do so by smashing the like button and sharing this video around it helps out a ton with the YouTube algorithm and if you haven't already make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on to be the first to know when a new video goes live. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.